Hello everybody, this is Jenny Buckley from the Department of Mechanical Engineering at the University of Delaware. I'm going to go over online office hours and discussion sections um, that are facilitated through Zoom conferencing. If you're watching this video, uh, you are likely another faculty member at University of Delaware or you are a teaching assistant um, who is going to need to run some office hours and discussion sections while we're teaching online. So let's start with uh, what you need to be ready to hold office hours or discussion sections online. On your end, you're going to need to make sure that you have access to Zoom. Uh, that includes a personal computer with a webcam. And you need to make sure that you're logging into Zoom with your UD credentials, which we will show in a demo coming shortly. Second thing is optional, but it's highly recommended for classes in which you need to demonstrate long form work, meaning a good example for that would be engineering classes where you want to show a derivation or you want to work through a problem in real time with students watching. Uh, you're going to want a document camera or a tablet. So some folks are already using tablets that have a stylus that you could actually write directly on the screen. That's great. If you don't have a tablet and you're working from a desktop like I am, uh, it is a good idea to get a portable document camera. There are some of those that are on loan through individual departments that are sharing them. Some faculty have them already issued to them. And then uh, if you do still need one, you could talk to Sherry at ATS. This is her contact information. This is for faculty only right now, folks. Uh, maybe at some point we will have enough to share out with select teaching assistants. But for right now, if you're a faculty member in need of a document camera, talk to Sherry. The type of camera that is recommended by the university and that has always worked well for me is this IP, IPVO camera with uh, visualizer software. It's super easy to install. Um, the software comes with it and it basically just sets up a webcam that is plugged in via USB port and is directed down towards the table. It also will automatically generate uh, um, mp3 files um, which are mp4 files which are highly compressed so you're not taking up much space on your computer um, this will allow your written work to be seen on the screen in real time so you can share that screen and work live or as I mentioned you can also record it so it's also useful for recording lectures but I would highly recommend if during office hours or discussion sections you're going to want to show students um, yourself doing work in real time that you get your hands on one of these document cameras and I will show you in a demo some of those capabilities. Okay so that's what you need to get set up now let's talk about tailoring the Zoom session. So your office hours or discussion sections are going to be held via Zoom, which is the university's conferencing service. Um, you want to think about what type of interaction you're going to have with your students during that session. It's either going to be one-on-one, -on -one, one student at a time, or small group. So one-on-one, -on -one, the settings that we're going to go through are going to uh, allow you to disable the private chat so you don't want students communicating with each other um, during a one-on-one -on -one session that kind of defeats the purpose you're going to enable a waiting room so this will this is the biggest feature this will allow you to pull in one student at a time students will queue up uh, and you will be able to pull them in one at a time and address whatever private concerns they might have um, this is most appropriate for faculty with drop-in office hours where you may be dealing with sensitive student issues that you don't want to be heard by the rest of the students uh, in a small group session. So this is highly recommended for faculty for your general office hours where you may be dealing with student issues or grade issues that are more sensitive. For the rest of the interactions, uh, small groups may be the best option and they require the least maintenance and work on your part. You can just focus on talking with the students. For small group sessions, you're going to want to enable join before host to allow students to um, enter that room even if you're not there. Students are directly admitted into the meeting. It's a good idea if you expect a lot of students, let's say it's a discussion section and you have 30 students, that you mute the students upon entry. This is a feature that we'll show you how to do. Um, small group style where there is still a conversation allowed between the students, the students can see each other. This is most appropriate for discussion sections or general TA office hours, which are typically held in small groups anyway. So these are the two options that we'll be going through, one-on-one -on -one and small group, and we'll show you what the settings look like for each. Just so you know what you're in for, this is what a typical small group session is going to look like. So here I am. Um, and here's everybody else who I am conferencing with. I am the host, so I have the ability to control uh, muting, to control the chats, that kind of thing. 
Um, but this would be a typical, let's say, discussion section or small group session with the TA would look something like this. A one-on-one -on -one session would have uh, only you talking to one particular student, so perhaps I would just be talking to Alex. I would just see his screen, and then I would have everybody else here would be queued up, and I could pull them in one at a time and drop Alex out, right, uh, in order to have that conversation. So I'll show you what those settings look like. Okay, last point before we flip over to the demo, it's really important that you remember to communicate your Zoom session details to the students. So uh, for drop-in faculty hours, um, we recommend that you post the URL for your drop-in faculty hours on Blue Hen Success um, if you're already set up on Blue Hen Success. If you're not, don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> But if you are, I'll show you how to do that. Uh, you can just post it as a URL and then students can join. Um, otherwise, you could post your general office hours as you always do on your Canvas site or email it to the students. Um, it's also recommended that you use a personal meeting room, which will give you a static address for your Zoom office hours. This would be for faculty for sure. I'm also going to recommend that for teaching assistants for office hours. This will just mean that you don't have to constantly go in and update the, the URL for your office hours for every single appointment. It'll just remain as the same address um, for the rest of the time. Students can always go to that address in order to, to meet with you. If they go to that address and you're not there, they'll just receive a message basically saying the host isn't there yet. Okay, so that's our recommendation and we'll show you how to do that. For TA office hours, um, TAs can just post uh, the office hours to Canvas, to a Canvas page. For my classes, this is on the first page when students um, enter the Canvas page for the class. They'll see a spreadsheet there with all the available TA office hours. You want to post that URL so students know which TA they're accessing um, when they uh, when they go ahead and, and log into that meeting. Again, for TA office hours, it may be best to schedule these either as a recurring meeting or to use the TA's personal meeting room in Zoom in order to give yourself a static address that doesn't have to continually be updated for every different week that TAs are holding hours. Lastly, discussion sections. Um, we're recommending that you hold these during your usual discussion section times and you post the URL to Canvas. This would be a good instance for a recurring meeting. So that meeting is um, just going to be a same address every week. You know it's going to be Tuesdays at 9.30 a.m. or whatever it winds up being for your class. It's the same address. They can just Students can just click on that link if they're in that section. It'll take them to the room. Um, this would also be a good idea for discussion sections to schedule with multiple hosts. So if your TA is unavailable, who's typically running that discussion section, perhaps you are also listed as a host. So you can go in and have host level controls over that meeting, or perhaps you have two or three um, TAs per office hours that you want to give that level of control to. So I'll show you all of this as we move into our Zoom office hour uh, slash discussion section demo, which will be the conclusion after this uh, video. That'll be the conclusion of the video. Okay, thank you. We're going to go through and practice setting up office hours and discussion sections in Zoom. I'm also going to show you how the document camera works. So let's start by uh, going to Zoom, making sure that we're logging in through Udell. I'm going to do this little rigmarole, get myself into the Udell system. Okay. So uh, first thing that we're going to want to do, let's schedule a new meeting. And I am going to make this uh, a discussion section. I'll just type in a class. So we'll make this starting uh, next Tuesday at 9 o'clock. It'll be 75 minutes for discussion section. It's going to be a recurring meeting. Um, I'll have it repeat weekly on Tuesdays, uh, and I can set the number of occurrences. Okay, so this will generate the same, uh, the same address for the students, the same URL. Don't need this to be required, don't need a password, video, um, I'm going to make sure that's on for both. I'm going to make sure the students are connecting via computer audio. Okay, I'm going to enable join before host. I'm going to mute uh, participants upon entry. I don't need a waiting room for it being a discussion section. I'm going to allow the students just to come right on in. 
Um, this is an advanced feature that you can play with if you want to do breakouts. I'm not going to cover it here. But let's say that uh, this is a discussion section. I'm setting it up as the host, but my TA may also join. And a couple TAs, and et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So I'm going to take those off so they don't receive an email right now. But that's where you would enter your TAs to have host privileges. Okay. So that is all set up. Now what's going to happen is you want to make sure that you communicate this to the students, right? So this is the single address that's going to work for this recurring meeting. So you're going to want to copy the invitation and then pass this along. This is the Zoom meeting information for that office or for that discussion section. So you're going to pass that along to the students who are in that particular session. And if you run concurrent sessions, obviously you're going to have multiple of these set up. Okay, so that would be an example discussion section. Now let's do example office hours. I'll do it first um, for faculty settings and then, or for TA settings, and then I'll recommend um, for what's gonna happen for uh, faculty settings. So I'll go back to meetings. Here's all my demo discussion sections. I'll start a new meeting. So I'll say this is demo, demo TA office hours. Okay, uh, TA off. Power for me 102 with, I'll just say Alex Bayer, who's my lead TA, one of my lead TAs there. Okay, so let's say this is at, on the 20th, or uh, let's say he's got office hours on Tuesdays at 10 o'clock for an hour. This is going to be a reoccurring meeting for him, okay? Um, and it'll reoccur weekly, uh, on, on, computer audio. This is one option for, for Alex, is to do this and to actually schedule these meetings. Um, the other option would be, so this is very similar to, um, to what would happen for a discussion section. The only difference being, I wouldn't recommend enabling join before host. Um, just because that's going to open up a meeting room and there's really no point in the students joining until, until your TA is there. Um, the, the other option that you could play with here is waiting room. So if this TA is anticipating maybe a discussion about grades, uh, they could enable the waiting room to allow a one-on-one -on -one student meeting. So if I do this, this is going to generate a, a single URL the other option would be as follows, and this is what I'm recommending for uh, my faculty colleagues here, is that when you go to my meetings, you would actually use your personal meeting room. So this personal meeting room is this static IP address right here, or this static um, URL. So this is always open for me. So I always have a meeting room open with this address that I can invite people to join. Um, if, and, and I can go in and I can edit this meeting, right? So right now it's enable join before host, mute participants upon entry, enable waiting room is off. Um, so I could go ahead and change these. These are my settings for my personal meeting room. So uh, I could, well, I'm gonna go ahead and, and change these because I'm actually gonna use this and live update my office hours. So I would want to use my video and the participant video. I'm going to ask people to only connect. Um, well, actually, I'll do both. People could also call in. I'm not going to enable join before host. Um, I am not going to mute participants upon entry, but I am going to select enable waiting room, which is going to allow uh, students to kind of queue up. So I'm anticipating in my private office hours that uh, people would, I, I would want to have that control where I can only let one person in at a time. Um, and then obviously I'm going to only be the host, I'm the, my only host on my private meeting room. So please know that the difference between these meetings and your personal meeting room is your personal meeting room is always open. It's always there. So when I copy this invitation, um, I am basically saying to people, it's like inviting them into your, into your virtual living room. So, uh, TAs, you can set this up as well. Feel free to use this, your personal meeting room in some instances, or I would recommend if, if it's for class-specific purposes only that you go ahead and you schedule those 
uh, office hours as a recurring meeting where you're allowing multiple people to join at once. Okay, for my faculty colleagues, I'd like to show you now how to add uh, your Zoom meeting for office hours, your drop-in office hours to Blue Hen Success Collaborative. So first thing you want to do is log into Blue Hen Success Collaborative. So I'm making the assumption you're already a Blue Hen Success user. If you're not, bear with me for two minutes while I talk to everybody who is. Um, what you want to then do is go to My Availability. I already have two office hours in here. I'm just making it a habit of adding those as drop-ins. Um, I'm going to make sure though that these office hours are, both of these already have my drop-in time listed via Zoom. Um, just for the sake of a demo, I'm going to add a new office hour time. So let's say that I'm doing, uh, nobody wants 8 a.m., 10 a.m. to uh, 11, 11 a.m. Um, for the spring semester, care unit, advising, location, this is where they want engineering. Okay, services, faculty advisor. Okay, I want to say uh, join my personal meeting room in Zoom. You will be placed in a waiting room until I am ready for you. Thanks for your patience. Okay, now I'm going to want to add my Zoom personal meeting ID which is this guy, and there that is, and then I'm going to go ahead and save that. One day of the week, oh yeah, let's say it's Wednesdays. Select a purpose, what is my purpose? Good question. Services URL, save. Oh, what is my purpose? Oh, it's appointment and drop-in. So I'm just going to do drop-in, so selected, save. There we go. Okay, so there it is, Wednesdays 10 to 11. Um, those are my drop-in uh, times, okay? So I'm just going to make sure before anybody signs up for that, I'm going to delete that, okay? But that was just a demo to show you how to add that. Again, that's going to be a static address. Okay, last part of the demo, folks. I'd like to show you how to use the document camera as part of your Zoom session. For this purpose, I'm just going to use my personal meeting room, and I'm going to open that up. So when you do that, again, this is like your, your living room, your virtual living room. It's always there. Um, so just be cognizant of when you are using this versus a scheduled meeting. Um, First thing that's going to happen if I've got my document camera plugged into my computer here is actually the camera for the document camera hijacks Zoom. So you will want to be conscious of that. The way to stop it from hijacking is to actually come in and switch this guy over. So hey, here I am in my basement living room. Um, so to show the students, say blah, 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 you're talking to the students, you want to show them something that you are working on on the document camera, you're going to switch over to the document camera, which is just plugged in via USB port. Notice that right now, um, if I were to write an equation, right, that's coming out backwards. So that's a problem. So the way that you fix this is you come in and you go to video settings, okay, and then you want to just turn off mirror my video, okay. Um, and then you could see exactly what I wrote there, right? So uh, that is got full text, right? And you can just write away. Okay, so that is everything I needed to show you. And good luck holding office hours and discussion sections via Zoom.